Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series, facilitated by renowned educators. ISE podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. If the move happens very, very quickly, uh, uh, St- Steve's point is, is extremely valid in the sense that your higher premiums will also appreciate, which works against you. So recognize that with this type of strategy, um, you really want to see uh, you really want to see that that uh, um, you know that that time depreciation take place. But recognize that if if I sell this 133 option. Um, again, I'm kind of it's a mess here, but and it's a near term option. I'm collecting time, okay, and I'm collecting volatility. So even if the if the underlying trades well above uh, 133 in a short period of, in a short period of time, that time depreci- that time value component will be gone. That becomes mine. The volatility will ultimately be out of that because that's baked in the time. So where my where my loss essentially is incurred is on the intrinsic value, right? So the intrinsic value of that option. Well, I'm making intrinsic value on my lower strike as well. So recognize that although um the op the uh, market has uh, the the pair value has has rallied well above within that one month if it's a shorter term option that time component will be ticking away. We have some choices that we can make. We could say, all right, well, you know what? Uh, uh, right now we are in a position where, okay, the 133s, we're, uh, w- they're now in the money. We've made all the time component. We can actually roll and, and buy those back because, um, you know, we're, we're profiting on this position and then sell the next month and collect more time premium at a higher strike. So there's there's a there's ways that you can do it a little more advanced uh uh for the time that we have to discuss right now, but um but you can you can offset some of that when you are in that position. But you again, um this goes back to options basics. If you don't want to inhibit your upside potential, then you're not going to create a spread strategy. <laughs> it's as simple as that. You're going to have to pay the premium that they're asking. And that leaves you wide open for a move uh, as far as this market wants to go over that period of time. True. No, true. There's a couple true. questions, Jake. Do you want, should we take them at the end, or do you want to take them now? Well, you know what? This is uh, the end for me, Steve. So uh, if you have uh, anything more to say uh, uh, or, or reference, uh, by all means. But uh, uh, I think probably now is as good a time as any to ask some questions. It's uh, – Sunday evening, and I've got a two-hour drive uh, home from my office here. So, and a wife that I haven't seen in two let's, days. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> we got a question about how far out. I guess uh, I'll just comment that basically it, it depends on uh, what you're looking at, not only what you're, but how much you're paying and what's your forecast. Uh, uh, yeah. You want to comment, Jason? Well, no, one hundred percent. So, I guess the question was was how far out, and 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 that. Uh, um, you know what? It, it's one hundred percent what Steve said. If um, uh, you know, we use those on the charts, those those uh, focal areas as sort of key short term or near term targets. So, if if you felt that okay between now and the end of the month that prices were going to trade below that, well, then that you would you would want to sell your options. Uh, at or slightly above that, then looking for a trade towards that, those options expiring worthless, recollecting your thoughts, reestablishing a resistance level to the upside, and so on and so forth. As far as as bigger picture, um, you know, with respect to the option contract that you're buying, uh, again, that that just that that depends on what your what your outlook is. Um, uh, with respect to the U.S. dollar and whether or not you believe in the in the in the notion or the idea that we're going to see a continued rally, albeit not likely in as straight as line as we've seen, we may see a continued rally as other currencies continue to lose value um, and uh, and other certain factors play out over the next little bit. 
I think this will be the last one, Jace, because sure. you need to get, get home. Uh, no worries, no worries. I just... uh, Joseph wants to know, and I think he misunderstood. Uh, Joseph, I think, was thinking, here's what his question is. Why is it worthless if it goes from 115? I guess he's referring to the AUX. Okay. Uh, what, moves from 115 to 160. Wouldn't you make the entire spread but no more? But we mix two different strategies, right, Jace? Yes. You're talking about the calendar and the vertical. Do you want to comment on the different, uh, you know, the profitability of those two different trades? Well, it, it, yeah, okay. So, so essentially, uh, um, what you know, we were talking about the, um, um, I, well, I think we were talking about the CDD 127 to 160. Maybe that's what, uh, what. Right. Um, and I brought an AUX and said, if you did the calendar at 115, you didn't, you did very poorly because. You paid whatever you paid, and, and the calendar is basically worthless now. Because, and you pointed out that if you sell an option and it goes deep in the money, you're going to get hurt, right? I think you brought that point out. Yeah. Well, if we uh, here's your AUX, and uh, again, let's say it traded from 115 to 160. The the thing is, um, if if you sold, uh, let's just say a 125, you know, the bottom line is, if we look at our rights and obligations. By selling that 125, we've obligated ourselves to deliver. Again, we're just talking about in general terms here that underlying at 125. But recognize that although we're at 160, we still have the right to to buy it at 115. So we'll always be able to to recognize that spread value. So as long as that spread is, we pay less than what the the, the 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 possibility is for us to make, which is which is um, you know it's theoretically impossible for us to tr to to pay more. Even if we're at 160, we're still going to get that. Where where you're where you're going to look like you're getting hurt is that if you've done this for a bigger picture or a longer term, okay, this is appreciating, this is appreciating, this is going to start looking like a loss. And it may or may not be offsetting. Uh, it may or may not, or this sorry gain here may or may not be offsetting it. So ultimately, you can't recognize that full spread value until the expiration of the spread of the strategy. Does that make sense? Is that explain a little better, Steve? I don't know. Yes. Joseph, just remember, if you're doing a vertical spread, you're going to have a market forecast, meaning it's directional. Most, almost all vertical spreads. You're going to have a, a forecast, a bias, up or down. If you do a calendar spread, you may or may not have a bias. But if you do a calendar spread at the strike price, or the underlying is right there at, at that strike price, then you're not going to have a bias. And you're basically predicting non-movement in the market. Yeah. So I think I confused the situation by mentioning that the calendar spread, you'd get hurt. And that's true, but only if... You know, if you had the calendar, as Jason was talking about vertical spreads, you wouldn't get hurt at all. You would make the difference between the two strike prices. You just may have to sit on that trade for an extended period of time, right. which which results in opportunity uh, loss in other areas. So, uh, you know, the, the bottom line is, you know, regardless, uh, we're talking about a number of different strategies. No matter what, you always need to sit down and you need to to plot out, map out your objectives what you want to accomplish with this particular trade, what your anticipation is with the underlying, uh, where you think it's going to go, how long you want to be in that trade, and then you're going to tailor your strategy accordingly. So, again, we've shown you a couple of examples for maybe bigger picture opportunities. But remember, uh, you know, there's always risk, regardless of which strategy you're looking to implement, and there's always, uh, there's always trade-offs when you try to initiate uh, you know, a spread type strategy. If you think longer term than, than the, you know, that the U.S. dollar is going to keep going up against these major, uh, um, major currencies and you don't want to limit your upside, you know what? You're going to have to bite the bullet, pay for that longer term call option, and you're going to have to manage it. If it goes against you, you're going to have to cut your losses if the technicals are telling you a different story. But it just means that to, to enjoy that 100% upside potential, you're just going to have to pay that, that high premium that, that, that the market makers are asking for right now. Okay? If you want to offset that, 
then your spread strategy is is a very uh, it's sort of the next logical approach to uh, to do so. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com/podcasts.